Welcome back into the world of Tango opening. This is going to be third part of this opening and I'm going to present you how to play against third move knight f3. Uh, but this is going to be a very short video. So it is going to be consisted of only third side lines uh, by actually fourth move uh, side lines by white in the knight f3 line. So how do we begin? After, uh, so once again, d4, knight f6, c4, knight c6, when they go with knight f3, we can play e5. I just have to tell you and to warn you that of all the variations against the tango, this one is the most difficult. Uh, because it stops classic e5 with, of course, removing our knight from queen side c6, y7 to g6. And basically, you have to opt for e6. Some players uh, who like uh, Shigaren defense, instead of e6, which I'm going to teach you here, they play d5 and they just want to go to uh, Shigaren defense, but it's it's actually a bad line of Shigaren because they, they can take, and if you take by knight e4, and it's fantastic. So don't even consider playing this one. Uh, you have to play e6. Uh, simply, you gotta do that. And definitely after e6, White has like so many options. And I'm going to divide these videos on four parts. First part, four side lines, uh, let's just say bad lines for white, uh, that include d5 straight away, that include e3 here, and a line with early bishop g5. Apart from those three lines and the first video, then we're going to go to the second video, and second video will be only for knight c3. That goes directly uh, to Nim's opening because I'm going to teach you to play bishop b4. <coughs> Sorry for coughing. Third video will be for a very serious Catlin opening if they play g3. It's one of the main lines of the Catlin. I have to teach you how to play certain line with d5. And fourth video will be if they play one of, in my opinion, most annoying moves, and if they play a3, just to stop bishop b4. Then we have to play g6 with kind of king's indian type of games. Let's get started with this one. If they go with d5, of all the variations and all the moves, I believe that this one is just the worst. You play bishop, e takes d5, sorry, c takes d5, and bishop b4. It's a very tricky line. Uh, I played a couple of times against guys they usually go with bishop d2, then you just grab the pawn on d5 and win the pawn. Don't panic, because when they take knight on d5 is hanging, you gotta take by that knight. When they play e3, yeah, I know that it looks a little bit ugly. You have to put your knight on the rim of the board. And when they play b4, I know that once again it looks kind of ugly. But you know what? that's for the sake of material, you just want a pawn. You just uh, have to put your knight back to b8. A little bit weird position with these weird knights, but we got to pay the price for being greedy and getting that pawn. Don't worry, according to the engine assessment, black is absolutely fine and white doesn't have any kind of compensation, even though we, we play this terrible knight before, knight a6, knight b8 plan. After d5, e takes, c takes, bishop b4. What happens if they play just the main line, knight c3? You go knight e7. And all of a sudden, we just threaten to take the pawn on d5. They can't play, uh, for example, a line uh, that was done once against me, uh, queen d4, threatening this bishop on d4, because you just grab the pawn on d5, defend it. Uh, bishop with a tempi and you should be absolutely happy. In a game Garza de la Villa Garcia from the, played in championship of Spain like 20 years ago, de la Villa captured on c3, brought his knight back chasing this bishop away. The guy tried to keep some sort of compensation with a bishop pair and after a5, c6, followed by d5, put a on e8, play d5 and eventually he even uh, brought the uh, bishop pair back and basically uh, Garcia was winning. That's why after d5, e takes, c takes, bishop b4, knight c3, they have to play e4. I know it looks a little bit weird uh, because 
Can we take the pawn on e4? No, it's not for a recommendation. I believe that I played once Blood's game and uh, I had lots of troubles after knight e4 and queen d4. And just because we don't want to take any unnecessary risks, we're just going to go with castles, preparing ourselves to take on e4 and, for example, placing our rook on e8, stopping this pawn on e4 with d6 and bringing the knight back to g6. I just want to tell you one thing that bishop c3 was played in game Cunningham against Larry Christiansen. Larry captured the pawn, uh, brought his knight back, and after c4, play d6. You can also do that with the knight e4 line if you do it and take it immediately. I'm talking about this one. Uh, basically, Larry captured, played knight e4, brought it back, and played d6. After bishop d3 castles, played c5. And you know what? I'm not a big fan of this type of game. Yes, we're up a pawn, but basically... Uh, they do have a compensation. Actually, in that game of Christiansen, Christiansen played first castles, my fault. And after Bishop d3, he actually went with this one. I was actually showing you a different game. What's the point of knight e7 and knight g6? I like this one. It's traditional maneuvering of these knights. You just want to put your work on the open file. You just want to play d6 against the e4 pawn. And it's a very nice fact that we got a bishop and before that threatens this knight to take on c3 and weaken the pawn on e4. So after castle rook e8, rook e1, almost everything was forced. In a game, Cunningham Christiansen actually was queen c2, d6, bishop g5. Bishop g5 is never efficient for white if the knights are on f6 and g6. And actually I learned this from tango opening because... You can always play h6 to get rid of this. But actually, he first did bishop d7 because in case of h6, immediately bishop f6, queen f6, knight b5 is maybe possible to go after the pawn on c7. So he played bishop d7. Rook c1, now h6. Now no, uh, knight b5 didn't work. But now Larry Christiansen played c6. And after knight d5, but his guy captured. And after this, won the pawn. Queen c6 played rook d8 and... He was up a pawn. Yes, he had like a bit broken pawns, but let's just be honest, the rook on e4, queen on f6 that is attacking b2, but more importantly, knight on g6 that can go on f4 and do some nasty tactics with knight h3 and knight g2. I believe this looks fantastic for um, a black. Uh, so, a reasonably uh, Christiansen won afterwards. Uh, if rookie one would actually happen in a game between two GMs, Timoshenko against Bologan, by the way, Bologan is one of the best guys who was using Tango opening, including Nakamura, Caruana, and others. So after like uh, C6, um, it's very uh, difficult to decide when are you going to play D6 to prevent T5 and where are you going to play C6 to be able to, I don't know, put that queen on B6 or A5. <coughs> so after c6, queen b3. In case of d takes c6, of course, that you should take by d pawn to open up the light square bishop and go to g4 afterwards. So after queen b3, bishop d6. I very much like this originally, um, original reaction by black that stops e5 by black and actually fights against this um, very annoying ideas by white. Uh, h3, b5. Uh, well, it's more or less like getting some space there on the queen side. In case of d takes e6, d takes e6 is, would, would keep the uh, logical pawn structure. And basically, after a3 goes with bishop b7. After bishop e3, a6. I like this move a6. It reminds me of all those Slav defenses where you play a6 with a pawn on c6 and you actually get ready for a c5. This is just my opinion. I believe that here, uh, white has to react with a4, but it doesn't work. That's the problem. Usually in Queen's Indian and Slav positions and in Queen's Gambit defenses, you go with a4 to stop c5 because a takes b5 is hanging. So after like a4 and after b4, you just kick that knight away and then you take by knight on e4. That's the central pawn. So basically, after rook e81, played queen c7, controlling e5, and now he went with c5. He actually assessed very nicely that here, uh, creating like a pretty broken pawn structure around the king and winning the bishop pair wouldn't be that bad for black. 
and uh, Polygon eventually won the game. So just once again, in case of d5, you first take, play bishop b4, bishop d2, they lose a pawn. In case of knight c3, you just go after that pawn and you can decide whether you want to play against these pawns on e4 and d5 in uh, with d6 or in the original way with c6, or you just want to get some risk, take on c3, take on e4 and play like that. Apart from d5, there is also line with e3. Uh, speaking of these lines with e3, we actually uh, talk about some uh, Nimzo and Bogo Indians. So we play bishop e4. If they ever play knight c3, don't forget, with existing knight on uh, c6, you have two plans. One is after castles, you just want to go with d5. So after bishop d3, you play d5. And that's a well-known plan that I really like and enjoy so much here. Bologan in one of his games played d6, took on c3, and played e5. I have to tell you that it's very difficult type of position for you. So I wouldn't suggest you to go with this one. Um, of course, bad players would play d5, in which case you play for an equalize without any troubles. But good players would keep, uh, keep like flexibility of the pawn structure and would keep the bishop pair. So after knight e2, you play rook e8, f3. They want to play at some point somehow e4. Why? Because they have a bishop pair. They want to open up the game. Bologan plays b6. That's why I'm telling you it's difficult. And he wants to bring his knight back to e7, to g6, and maybe to fight against this pawn structure with c5. After knight b3, knight e7, c5, plays knight g6, c takes, c takes, e4. Finally, he opened up the game. Bologan plays h6. And after like uh, c4, played bishop a6. All of a sudden, he actually transferred this game into fight against the c4 weakness. Bishop e3 captured, played knight e5, and from this point onwards, he was fighting to win the pawn. Since the bishop on d3 was hanging, he eventually won on c4 and uh, played d5. He beat Ibrahimov, but I once again have to repeat that. Uh, this game and the complete system for black is quite difficult for playing. And just because of this, I prefer to play d5. Why? Because we got a very simple plan. So when they play like a3, you always take first on c4. That's important because you earn a tempi, or let's just say still a tempi. And then you go back with the bishop on d6, and you have the easiest plan on earth. You just want to break in the center with e5. This is positional approach. This is Nimzo. And that's why I'm telling you, Knight F3 is the most serious of all approaches by White against the Tango. And finally, if E3, Bishop B4, if they don't play Knight C3, if they play Bishop D2, you just exchange, play Castle, and then you just go with D6 and D5. The position is very Bishop D3, D6, Castles, and E5. Position is absolutely normal. You have a nice game and you almost equalize. Problem is, what happens if they play knight bd2? Because it's kind of flexible. And uh, when you play d6, they go a3. You take on d2, of course. That's why you uh, came on b4 to actually fight uh, against d4. They have to take by queen. I usually say my, uh, explain my students that good players take by queen uh, because they want to find a better diagonal for that bishop with b3 and bishop b2. After a5 to stop b4, to stop b3, you have to play b3, because if they forget to play b3, you will play a4, and they will never be able to play b3 uh, till the rest of the game, because you'll take a takes b3, and then they will remain with a weak uh, pawn on a3, and uh, a file will be yours. So after b3, queen e7, why queen e7? Because we're obsessed with pushing e5, and of course not exchanging queens. Bishop e2, e5, d5. The real question is, if the queen wasn't on e7, we would be able to bring it to e7 and to a logical g6 square. That's what we always want to do. But since we can't do that, we now have to decide between two moves. Knight d8 and knight b8. I believe that this one is a little bit better. So after queen c2 to play e4, castles bishop e2. I don't have to ask you so much here. Usually people would play knight d7, knight c5, which is not the brightest idea because they can go with b4 once the knight comes to c5. But basically, learn. This is like one of the main ideas in the tango. And we just go with the knight g4. Why? 
because we know the typical king's side idea and typical action on the king's side. Finally, they can also go with this early bishop g5 move. If that happens, just like in previous two variations, we go with the bishop before. Basically, this Nimzo or Bogo Indian approach with bishop before is our main idea in all these lines. So, uh, it's not good for them to play knight c3. It's uh, one of the lines of Nimzo Indian. And uh, you just go with h6, with g5. You take on c3 and play d6. I have to brag a little bit here that I played like literally 20 games or even more in the tournament, rapid, blitz, actually blitz over hundreds. And I don't remember that I ever lost a game. All we want to go here is uh, the b6, bishop e7, queen e7, long castle, and break with e5 in the center. You just have to take a look at some games of Michael Adams and learn plans for black. After a3, b6, bishop e7, you just go with queen on e7, make long castle, and you even want to organize the king's side attack. That's why after bishop g5, bishop b4, they have to, in my opinion, play knight bd2. Uh, it's what uh, Yasser Seravan did in a couple of his games. You play h6, once again kicking this bishop away, and played like g4. It's a very tricky moment of the game because I played a blood game against some... German I am. He analyzed this and played a3. In the first game, I had lots of problems. I took on f3, and I believe that in that blitz game, I even lost. But you should be bringing your bishop back to e7. So after knight e5, knight e4, e3, knight c6. What's your risk? Uh, well, that after this, you're going to uh, play. Uh, you just have to imagine that you have to be up a pawn with a terrible pawn structure. Uh, but they, they can't take. Uh, don't forget about this one. They can't take. Because if they take, you play h5, you play h4, and you go with e5. You just go after the bishop on f4, and that's how you trap the piece. Uh, this is not likely to happen in your games, but what do you have to know? That after bishop g5, bishop b4, knight bd2, you just chase away this bishop. If they take on f6, you end up with a bishop here. It's nice for you. Um, with an easy game in the middle game. If they play bishop h4, it's quite forced because you're obsessed with uh, winning this d4 pawn. This would be end of the first video. It's a short one. And now we go for the main lines.